Welcome to the wonderful world of autism. But first, what is autism? Unfortunately, that is more than a complicated question to explain. Autism can be a person that has n no concept of body language. Can't understand it, tone of voice, all that, out the window. Or somebody who's creepily good at reading your mood. It can be somebody who has no imagination and finds the concept of visualising stuff in their head entirely alien. Or someone whose imagination is so vivid it feels like stepping into another reality. People which love sensory information and actively seek it out. And people that find sensory information just agony. That would be me. It compass people which may only have a small amount of ADHD and the rest of them seems entirely normal, or people that permanently stuck with the mental age of a six-year-old. It is vast and monumental, and to understand all of it you'll need the patience of a god. <sighs> but on this never-ending spectrum of insanity, the realm I fall in is something more on the severe end, but maybe not in the way that you expected. I suffer from severe, severe sensory overload, meaning, well, sensation and experience hurts me. My brain's presented with a leaf. It goes insane over the way the light reflects off it, all the tiny little details, the way it wrinkles and dies, the veins all over the goddamn thing. And it's not just that. It'll then go on to uh, imagine I I'm my brain's exploding over the detail of a single leaf, and now I look at a tree. Oh dear God, no! <laughs> my brain's just wrapped up in the detail of noise, vibrations, sensation where it comes to sight, smell, sound. The feel of rare air rushing in and out of your mouth when you breathe. The sensation of, well, the vibration from the... When you walk and the vibrations that come from when you speak. Just everything is a monumental, beautiful world of detail. And for a moment, it's wonderful. But only for a moment. Then my brain basically breaks down. I can't handle all the input, it hurts, it's hard to think straight, it's just overwhelming and I just want to crawl up to a ball and die, it's just so much, just this, I can't really go outside, I can't basically see people, because the information's too much, can't have friends which sucks. <sighs> What's going to drive me mad at first? The pain from the sensory stuff or loneliness? Anybody to guess? Whoa. <laughs> oh my. Basically, I spend all my life stuck in my room because I can't leave it. And the worst part is, even depriving myself from as much new sensory information as possible, it always, always hurts. Imagine that feeling when you throw up and you're completely engulfed in that horrible sensation or when, you're, when your arm's about to break and you have that horrible moment of just, I don't know, and then stretch that out for an hour and then stretch that out for three hours then stretch that feeling out for a day and then a week, then a month, then a year. And then it's been six years, and it never, never, never stops. It's just horrible. It's at a certain point, it's just what? Why would you want to live anymore? <laughs> oh, that's what it feels like. No therapy, no treatment. New medication. Nothing's ever helped. It's just this. Well, maybe two things. 
One day I was dragged out of the house to see the school place and everything. And, uh, I was terrified and hated the idea. But because of it, I got to meet one person. And that person's Richard Bloomer. He's not a junior psychologist or doctor or the smartest person you'll ever meet. He's just a kind human being. And just meeting a kind human being did more good than any of those things ever would for me. He made me feel like the insight I had to do with autism was important and, and I could help people. He encouraged me to start doing artwork and writing stories and seemed to enjoy them. He made me feel like I had value, like I wasn't a useless freak, that I could give something to the world, that even if I would be permanently stuck in pain, that at least I could help other people not to feel that way. Rich was probably one of the greatest things to ever happen to me. Not a genius, not a doctor, just a good human being. And the second thing was a ridiculous thing I found on the internet one day that uh, is called Homestuck. Homestuck is a monumental comic book series. It's hilarious, scary, overdramatic, denser and larger than Ulysses, and, and a beautiful monstrosity courtesy of the internet. And the best thing about it was made by one guy, Andrew Hussey. When I found out this, I was like, what? This thing I love more than anything. This monumental, insane project. Just made by one guy. A guy who had a social life, adult responsibilities, a job. And this is me, an autistic boy, just stuck in his room with none of those things. What's my excuse? So I started practicing drawing, started practicing writing. And then two, three years later, I've managed to raise over £3,000 for charity for it. I've had two art exhibitions. I've written two books. The third one just about to come out. Um, it just showed me that one person with enough determination and enough insight can make something. I don't really know where I'm going with this. But it really, really, inspi it really, really inspired me. And I'm not sure if I'd have done any of the creative works without this, without being shown that one person completely by themselves could create something ridiculous, massive and wonderful. So what did you take away from this? Autism can be, well, scary and incomprehensible. It's just a massive field. But so's life. And like autism in life, sometimes a small amount of creativity and a small amount of kindness can do a world of good.